I read Joshua 3, 5, and I thought to myself, like, I want to see God do wonders. Like, I don't want him to see just him do wonders tomorrow. Like, I would love to see God do wonders even amongst me today. I mean, don't you? Don't you want to see God do like supernatural, wonderful works in your life, through your life, and around your life? And I'm just going to tell you, that's why. If you're new to STF, or maybe you don't know a lot about us, that's why one of our greatest passions is to see every generation, that generation, this generation, and the next generation, consecrate themselves that we as a multi-generational church can reach people with the gospel because that's the only message we have. Good news, it's the gospel, the message of Jesus that he loves you and died for you that we can raise people up in God's word. Again, not in our teachings or in our thoughts or opinions, but like what does the Bible actually say about this. So we want to raise them up in God's word and then to release people for you to go and do the ministry that God's assigned you, that God has called you, that God has placed on your life and that it will transform neighborhoods and yes, even the nations for God's kingdom. That's our passion. Like if you want to know who we are, like that's us. Our purpose is for that, to help every generation Find and follow Jesus, but we're going to be very transparent with you, uh, but especially the next generation. Like We want to make sure, and you're going to see in just a minute why, it is so important that we hand our faith off to the next generation. So we want to come alongside them. Uh, we want to help them stand against the peer pressure that they face. And yes, every generation faces peer pressure. Uh, but I don't think any of us of my generation or older had peer pressure in their hand 24-7. I just don't think that was the days in which we live. And therefore, I do believe it is much more difficult. And of all the things that our culture brings against them, I mean, Pastor David addressed this earlier, but most of you saw what happened in the opening scenes of the Olympics. And it's interesting, right? That culture attacks only Christianity. Uh, if that had been Islam or if that had been Buddha or Hinduism, I mean, can you imagine the revolt that we would have had? But also understanding that when the Lord had this supper, this meal, even with his disciples, he knew that in just a few moments, one of them would betray him. He knew that in just a few moments... One of them would deny him, not, not once, not twice, three times even. You know, the beautiful thing of the Lord's Supper is it is an invitation to anyone to come and receive grace and forgiveness and to live in a relationship with a God that loves you more than the universe in and of itself. Now, I know because we've heard from a lot of you that you're boycotting the Olympics and you're never going to watch, you know, again. And here's what I would tell you. Uh, that's not the athletes. Uh, trust me, they didn't have a vote in that. Uh, matter of fact, if you want to be encouraged, uh, we often talk about uh, the Bible app, the verse of the day. Uh, for the next 12 to 15 days, they're having different Olympic athletes share the verse of the day and share their story. And I promise you, uh, you'll be encouraged by that. But that's why we want to invest so much. Uh, that's why we want to do so much for our kids' ministry and our student ministry, our young adult ministry even, because we want to impact the next generation. I've shared this a couple of times. We don't want to just influence them. And a lot of you are influencers. Uh, some of you do that in your circle of friends. Some of you do that in our community. Some of you do that on social media. I mean, you are an influencer. And we don't want to just influence a generation. We want to impact a generation because we're convinced that there is a generation rising up that can change the world. That they can change the temperature in the room. 